In today's video, we're going to be talking all about how much money you really need to be financially independent and possibly retire early. Coming up next. Hi everybody, my name is Dee Burks and this is Retirement Rescue, where we talk about how to make money, save money, and live well in retirement. Now one of the big topics that I talk about, as well as a lot of other financial people talk about, is financial independence. Over the past 10 or 15 years, there's been a big movement called the FIRE movement. That's financial independence retire early. Now as I've said on other videos, for those of us over 50, it's financial independence retire eventually. Because hey, we've already screwed the first part up. <laughs> But we're going to talk about how much money you really need to do that to be financially independent enough to leave an employer. Because that's really what we all want. Where you can do what you want to do with your time. Well, there's really two different viewpoints of financial independence. And within the FIRE movement is called Financial Independence Lean and Financial Independence Fat. For a lot of people, they just want to get to the point they can leave their employer, where they have enough money to cover their bills. And when you're talking about financial independence lean, this is accomplished in a number of ways. The first being you absolutely lower all of your expenses, because that is incredibly important if you're going to accumulate money for retirement in any sort of efficient manner. If you're doing financial independence lean, it's critical. You have to lower all of your expenses to the absolute bottom you can. Everything, food, clothes, you look at everything and you lower those expenses. You also look at your investments or you start making investments that will start producing income. Now this could be real estate, it could be investing in the stock market, it could be fully funding your 401k, your Roth IRA, all of those structures help. But it is all about making just enough money to cover those expenses where you can leave your employer. Now there are a lot of people who can get that to a very, very small amount indeed. And so they don't have to necessarily have a whole lot of money in savings in order to be technically financially independent. Maybe they've worked for a previous employer long enough to have a small pension. Maybe they have uh, money coming in from a settlement or inheritance or something of that nature. Um, they could have money coming in from side gigs. A lot of us do that initially before we get to financial independence. So you add all of these things up and the minute you have enough to cover your expenses, that's when you leave your employer. But there are some really, really good uses for financial independence lean. And let's talk about those right quick. There are a lot of people that work a very hard job. It's either physically hard or mentally hard. And when they get home and they're trying to think about doing a side business or doing something that earns money to get them away from that job, they're exhausted. They're absolutely exhausted. And they have family responsibilities and things they have to do. And they do not have the mental energy to do anything more. That's a problem. So in those cases, doing financial independence lean, where you just do the least that you can do to make the least that you can to cover your bills so you can quit that overwhelming, emotionally exhausting job and go to something else, that is a great use of financial independence lean. Because how are you ever going to get to true financial independence if you're so exhausted you cannot create these multiple streams of income? So that's a great use for it. There are a lot of couples who also employ this technique. If you have two people working, financial independence lean can be very, very effective to cover one of those people's salaries so that one person can quit, work on those multiple streams of income that the couple has agreed on and talked about, and then eventually as they build up enough money, the other person can quit. And they do so in a way that keeps their family secure. Someone's got regular income coming in while the other person is working toward their financial independence. And that is great. Couples can get to financial independence so much faster 
than a single person can, which just, I mean, that makes complete sense. But when you have two people working toward that goal, that can be a great use of that financial independence lien because you have one person still working and keeping the family secure, the other person working on those future goals that's going to give your family the life you want. So now let's talk about how much money you need. When you think about the actual dollar amount, a lot of people use $1.25 million in assets that you can take at 4%, which will produce $50,000 a year. $50,000 sounds like a lot of money, but it's really not. Especially if you look at inflation over the next few years, it's not a lot of money. Um, and for some people, it doesn't even match what they're making now, so it's not really a lot of money. And when you hear the amount 1.25 million, it sounds a little bit overwhelming. So you have to break it down into little steps. You have to look at the various ways you can bring in income that will allow you to reach that financial independence and still live. Well, the problem is, as we've seen with the pandemic, if the stock market drops 30% and your assets are largely in the market, can you then take a 30% cut and still be financially independent? And for a lot of those people, the answer is no. They can't. They would either have to go back to work or lower their expenses even further. 30% is a lot. Or pick up side work or something of that nature. Here again, I don't want to worry about that in 15 years when I'm almost 70. That is why I am choosing, while I have the ability to earn, to earn as much as I can, do as many side businesses as I can, and put all that money away and have enough that no matter what happens with the market, I'll still be financially secure. And that was my choice. Now, if you've listened to my videos very long, you know that my goal is financial independence fat. My goal is two and a half million dollars in my retirement account so that at 4% I can pull out a hundred thousand a year and still grow that principal. That's my personal goal. Now the big pros to financial ind independence fat for me is number one is more money immediately. While I'm earning, I get to maximize the amount I put in because there's going to be a limit to the amount of time I have to earn, and I know that. So I've got to maximize that money and put as much away as I can. It's also much more secure. If there's a drop in the market of 30%, I can go down to living on 70000 instead of 100000 Almost everyone could do that, and I certainly could. So it's more secure in the long term. I don't have to worry that I'm going to have to go back to work somewhere just to make ends meet. The minuses, of course, of financial independence fat are it takes more money. I've got to make more money, but I can be really, really focused on that because I already don't have a corporate employer. I already have a say over my time and how it's used, so I can add multiple streams of income to what I'm doing and still accomplish those goals. And so that's why I chose it. I mean, if I was 30 and I was leaving an employer to go then start another business or do my own thing, it's one thing. Because you have 30, 40 years before you're going to really be needing that money and, and more money even to live off of. I don't have that kind of time. I don't want to worry that in 15 or 20 years I may have to go back to work because my investments aren't producing enough. Now, there are many, many different ways you can incorporate this into what you're doing. It's not an all or nothing thing. You have to look at your situation and figure out, okay, what makes sense for me? So don't let those numbers kind of throw you off because they can. They're intimidating, I will admit, and they sound huge, but they're not as huge as you think, especially if you're looking at a timeline of five to ten years. They're not as big as you think. And you can piece together financial independence from a variety of sources without it all having to be dollar bills and cash. And that's good, good news. But you have to do you. So look at your financial situation. Think about what makes sense for you and your family. But if there is a way you can become financially independent 
and then use that independence to grow yourself to financially independent fat, then I say go for it. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.